Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority welcomes plans for the pedestrianization of the William Peter Boulevard. The Gower community welcomes its first ever summer camp. A national dance theater company on the cards for the Cultural Development Foundation. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Aquarium. Plans to pedestrianize the William Peter Boulevard are being welcomed by the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. The SLTA's Chief Executive Officer, Beverly nicholson Doughty, says these plans will undoubtedly spark more interest in the destination, along with other initiatives to be undertaken by the SLTA. Janelle Norville has more. The government of St. Lucia has announced a number of projects to come on stream. These projects include a nationwide road rehabilitation project, new properties to be constructed, as well as the Hironora International Airport Redevelopment Project. There is also an initiative of food for the pedestrianization of the William Peter Boulevard, as well as the improvement of the facades of storefronts and other buildings within the Castries Central Business District. All of these infrastructural projects, among other initiatives, according to St. Lucia Tourism Authority's Chief Executive Officer, Beverly nicholson Doughty, will serve to improve St. Lucia's tourism product. The infrastructure upgrades that are being made will support tourism growth. So all of these things work hand in hand. I think that uh, the, the recent uh, surge in events, uh, Carnival, Mercury, uh, leading up to Roots and Soul, um, all of these events also add uh, added awareness uh, to St. Lucia. So in addition to the assets, the natural assets, I think that all of the events that have been staged and uh, are certainly opportunities for new visitors to, to St. Lucia. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, also highlighted the Village Tourism Initiative soon to come on stream. The initiative will allow for a different type of experience for visitors to the island, one where they can immerse themselves in everything local. The launch is expected once the legislation has been passed. It will initially encompass eight villages, including Grizzly, Ancillary and Soufre, and under the Village Tourism Project, each village will have its own theme, such as wellness, art and craft, and local traditions. With the help of low-interest financing supported by the government, property owners in each village will be encouraged to upgrade their homes and properties to make them suitable as accommodations for visitors. The CEO explained the benefits to be derived from such an initiative. We certainly expect that we're going to have the initial travelers that want that dive deep, deep dive into immersing themselves into a destination. They, they will be at the forefront of wanting to participate. Um, I think that as we advance in the development of the village tourism and creating additional assets and opportunities, that we certainly uh, feel that we're going to increase visitors that want to go into areas that they haven't traditionally gone into. I think this is important for two reasons. Again, it's extremely important that tourism is not isolated uh, into any one area and that we can see the tentacles of tourism spread throughout, your, throughout the country. Uh, and, and that happens when you have community involvement in your tourism development. St. Lucia saw record figures in 2018 with approximately 1.2 million visitors to the island, accounting for a 10.2% increase overall. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. The first ever summer camp in the community of Gara has been hailed a success. Dubbed Adventure and Fun, the two-week summer program saw the participants engage in a number of activities. Anissa Antoine reports. The Gara Innovation and Career Development Summer Camp 2019 has officially come to an end. The two-week summer camp was geared towards teaching pro-social skills to the participating students. Cyrus Sipal, the district education officer, commended the teachers on their efforts. With pro-social skills, what you are doing is that you are teaching the person how to behave. 
You are teaching the person what to do. You are teaching the person how to do it. So therefore, if you spend the time teaching the person how to do it, there will be no need now to tell the person what not to do because they are accustomed of doing the right thing. So again, let me commend you, um, Gara, knowing that we have a, a good um, set of children with us. So we need to ensure that the next five years, the next 10 years, when we look at them, they will be looking as they are there now. They're looking very naive and then, and then gentle and so on. So we want to make sure that we nurture them. CPAL informed that a two-week cricket camp will be taking place at the Balata playing field from August 5th, 2019. Parliamentary representative for Babono, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, encouraged students to continue to take advantage of the extracurricular activities being organized within the constituency. We have identified a number of after-school programs. We have after-school programs in netball, we have it in cricket now, we have um, Mulaika doing it, and looking at a question of football. But apart from this, these sports, on which of course we can speak to that right now, being involved in sports is not pleasure. Business, being involved in sports is a business. You know what Kimali Melius? You know what Lovin Spencer? You know what Af Reynolds? All from Babono, right? And they are making a living out of sports. The Gara Innovation and Career Development Summer Camp commenced on July 22nd and culminated on August 2nd, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The Cultural Development Foundation is in the process of establishing a national dance theatre company. Director of Events at the CDF, Junior Fredericks, says they are hoping that from that dance company, a cadre of dancers will be trained to represent and reignite creative arts in St. Lucia. There have been many attempts, like persons from like Christine Samuel, who have started a national dance company. What we want to do is to continue from that legacy and to have something that's viable and working. Of course, we're looking into going on tour with the production at other festivals around the region and the world. Uh, the staging of one major theatrical production each year during and after the National Arts Festival. And of course, facilitating training in the visual and performing arts. Richard Ambrose, a participant in this year's Carifesta, believes the initiative will give St. Lucian artists a platform to allow the world to experience St. Lucian art. I have been blessed to see what the arts contributes to an individual and to an economy. Um, the writings of Sir Arthur Lewis tells us that we have to focus on the resources we have if we really want to develop our nation. I know from interaction with some of the artists that I've met over the years, Christine Samuels, Tariba, Lynn, that on the manufacturing standpoint, we're ready. But on the artistic point where St. Lucia needs to work is to connect the World Wide Web the internet. We need to get the artist momentary performance all over the world from Russia to Saudi Arabia so that they know what we're doing here and can appreciate our arts. The World Health Organization, WHO, is urging Caribbean countries to take advantage of recent reductions in the cost of diagnosing and treating viral hepatitis and scale up investments in disease elimination. A new study by the WHO published on Friday in Lancet Global Health, has found that investing six billion US dollars annually in eliminating hepatitis in 67 low and middle income countries, such as those in the Caribbean, would avert 4.5 million premature deaths by 2030 and more than 26 million deaths beyond that target date. The study says a total of 58.7 billion US dollars is needed to eliminate viral hepatitis as a public health threat in these 67 countries by 2030. The study also notes that by investing in diagnostic tests and medicines for treating hepatitis B and C now, countries can save lives and reduce costs related to the long-term care of cirrhosis and liver cancer that result from untreated hepatitis. Around 3.9 million people in the regions of the Americas are living with hepatitis B and another 7.2 million with hepatitis C. 
while about 125,000 died from viral hepatitis in 2013. Paho says that hepatitis B and C antivirals can reduce the risk of developing liver cancer by 75%. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rise St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome everyone to your update from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. St. Lucia's contingent returned home all day Monday from Dominica after dethroning defending champions Grenada to be crowned 2019 champions of the Winlot CBN Winnet Island Secondary Schools Games. St. Lucia took the title with first places in boys and girls volleyball and netball and second places in track and field, female basketball, and a third place finish in football. St. Lucia amassed 35 points, Grenada placed second with 31 points, and Dominica third with 27 points after a week of sporting events. Grenada won the athletics competition with a total of 305 points, St. Lucia second with 247, St. Vincent and the Grenadines third with 206 points, and Dominica fourth with 148 points. In netball, St. Lucia was crowned champions with five points. Dominica placed second with three points on better goal difference over St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Grenada finished in fourth place with one point. Grenada took the boys basketball title on points difference, having finished the tournament with an identical record with St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Both teams finished with a win and two draws. Dominica finished third with one win, a loss and a draw, and St. Lucia fourth with two losses and a draw. Dominica took home the girls' basketball title going undefeated with three wins and finishing with six points. St. Lucia was second with four points, Grenada third with two points, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines in fourth place. St. Lucia won the girls' volleyball title. Dominica placed second and Grenada third. St. Vincent and the Grenadines finished in fourth spot. St. Lucia also took home the boys' volleyball title. Dominica placed second, Grenada third, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines in fourth place. Grenada were crowned champions in football, with St. Vincent and the Grenadines second and St. Lucia third. Dominica finished in fourth place without a single win in the tournament. Individual awards were also presented to athletes and coaches. MVP awards for St. Lucia went to Megan Nestor for netball, Keon Allen for boys basketball. Joint MVPs in girls basketball went to Maya George and Megan Nestor. Linus James was MVP in boys volleyball, Cleo Phillip girls volleyball, and Dylan Fannis in football. The 2020 Winlot CBN Willard Island Schools game are next set for Grenada. Before we leave you, Here's some highlights and some video from the closing stages of the competition.
And that's your update from Move Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. Capacity in the beekeeping industry is expected to be enhanced through collaboration among the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, ICA, Argentina, and four CARICOM countries, Barbados, Dominica, St. Lucia, and St. Kitts and Nevis, will participate in a regional South-South cooperation project to strengthen the industry in the Caribbean countries by increasing the productivity of beehives. More from Michelle Nurse of CARICOM News Time. The project, titled AP Carib, will see Argentine specialists facilitating the installation of Peron beehives, which are more productive than the Langstroth beehives that are traditionally used in those countries. In a release, ICA said it will coordinate the provision of advisory services by specialists from Argentina, the world's third largest exporter of natural honey. Due to its rich diversity of flora and fauna, the Caribbean region has great potential for apiculture, Ica says. And stay with the NTN nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayon. I'm innovative. I'm competitive. I am productive. I'm creative. I constantly improve what I do. And how I do it. I provide excellent customer service. I never stop learning. I give up my best, always. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, embracing excellence. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquion. Merci, Madame, Department of Responsibility for Information and Government Service. Kasi GIS, asamu pi Televizion Nasional pi ya NTN, kapo sa to Nouvelle Aquayol, po sa to Primus Hutchinson. Devlopman a fasad solei kushan pi ya, ka fe bon vitesse ek po gwe, le vini po devlopman patiklema an vil sofouye. Komote po metou an deni program la, nou ka yi po sa to yon wapo, kompletman, asu gwan seremoni, ki te fet simen pa se, pou te po sa te Square Sofouye, qui était vu et bâti par le gouvernement Setlisi. Sofouye, j'ai trouvé une facilité neuf bord de la mer, un établissement de la place pour les cultivateurs, un établissement pour l'autopassage gare, et à présent, un square qui bâti très joli pour citoyer et exciter les peuples en Ouest Sofouye. En parlant de nouveau square, qui a présenté diverses facilités pour pas en ébelté, mais aussi pour ajouter yon l'esprit de confortabilité. Représentatif de Kai Parlement, pour souffrir, on est wab Herod Stanislas, déclare que le développement de la porte est tellement croyance et aussi pour tout l'autre qui est résident, eh bien, sorti en cité souffle. A vous opinion, parce que vous opinion, on est wab Stanislas, ce que ça la, Kai trouve qu'on y a une place qui est mémorable, pas seulement pour Jean Soufouye, mais aussi les étrangers qui ont visité. Le Premier ministre honorable Alain Chasne a expliqué que le développement économique qui a pris un coup en ville Soufouye, qui a aussi été en ville en ces autres communes qui ont été en ville Soufouye. Le Premier ministre Chasne dit que l'apparence de ce là c'est l'apparence de ce qu'il là a porté une histoire qui est très riche pour Soufouye, et qui a été en ville qui a bien apprécié de visiter la ville. Construction Square Neuf là commencé en l'année 2016 par le gouvernement de la République Chine de Taïwan. Cérémonie pour te ouvrir Square Sofia te préco mercredi le 31 juillet l'année 2019. Représentatif pour Babono, on est wab Ezekiel Joseph, félicité programme pour les garçons et petits filles en commune Garouan pour saison qui l'école fermée. Devant cérémonie, pour marcher finissement programme là, vendredi passé, à établissement ICD Center, à Gara, on a Joseph déclaré qu'il n'a jamais été en pile effort pour que les jeunesses, à ces diverses communes en Babono, qu'a trouvé Jide à donner une direction pour renforcer la capacité en plusieurs façons. Et pour le programme, ça là, principalement à Gara, c'est un qui a porté autant de bénéfices pour ses participants. Ici, aujourd'hui, si vous tenez un programme, 
Vous avez fait Baiko Handicraft, que vous avez parlé de ces policiers qui sont sortis de Paris, Babono, Firemen, qui sont sortis de Babono, ces teachers là qui 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 ont été mis en venir parler de vous, qui ont été éduqués à ce manière pour vous accompagner les corps, pour vous apprendre pour vous apprendre l'école, et puis à plus pour vous faire une qualité de l'éducation, pour vous faire une primaire dans la maison, comme maintenant, et bien c'est plus Officier éducation pour ces communes Oliwan Babono, M. Cyrus Sipal, tenu une commission pour ses enfants. M. Sipal présente un point qui, ce qui est plus important, c'est pour les parents comprendre que ce n'est pas seulement pour héler des issues, pour ne pas faire ce qui n'est pas bon, mais le plus important, c'est pour expliquer aux gens qui ça n'est pas fait pas bon. Ce so, qui est important là, c'est pour nous comprendre, whether c'est un la caillou, whether c'est une communauté, whether c'est l'école, whether c'est l'église. Ça nous suppose de faire, c'est instruire ma maille, qui manière nous suppose de ça, ça manager la vie. So, en anglais, on peut dire comme ça, on teach them the pro-social skills. Donc, so, au moment où on continue à instruire ça, comment dire, là, il y a une différence en société. Si on continue à dire que c'est comme ça, on suppose de approcher les gens qui plus grand par ça. Il ne pour dire que l'on veut un grand monde, pas faire ça. Non, ou ka di yo inset, ki sa yo si pose fè le yo wè an, an gwa moun. Se men kon sa e de kon sa, lo ka practice. Plou practice bagay la bien, se plou ka y vini pa pa fè an di den. So, so mwen ka di se apwe me di ya, dat ki se man mal anou ni an se different community ya, an nou spen pli tan ka instui yo, ki sa pou yo fè, pase ka um, spen tout tan ka di yo, sa yo pan pou fè. Pogam la te okonize pa mamzel Kalina John, ki se yon ofisye des asistans. Aïsi de Centra Gawa, pour que nous commencions le 22 juillet et le 2 août 2019. Plange a bien avancé pour stamper une dégueulasse en cette ouest en ville Castri. Ça a venu en réalité par projet de compétition des affaires touristiques à Ouijon, c'était pays caribéen. Le projet a été trouvé financé par la Banque mondiale. Pour encourager plus de compétition des affaires touristiques en région, en région à la même façon, pour faciliter plus de touristes pour visiter cette place qui a porté belle et sélectée principalement pour les autres là. Tout ça, c'est pour aider ou renforcer la capacité de développement de la place touristique en région et ça a fait par service bateau. Le gouvernement cette ci a identifié les produits des affaires touristiques en ville Castri, qui qui a porté bon investissement et activité pour placer la ville dans un hôtel qui a un morceau de main pour aider les touristes à la direction de la et aussi le peuple pays. Avant que le gouvernement cette ici, a décidé pour faire, c'est pour changer l'opération de Boulevard la, et établir une promenade afin que les places touristes et public la généralement sa visiter pour prendre une pause, une promenade et la famille, une petite boisson. Et bien seulement pour assister et expérimenter Belté Boulevard là, quand on promenade, côté l'auto, pas qu'à y s'agarrer, et bien aller venir encore. Belté Villa, qui a aussi un bâtiment neuf, dans la place Castri. J'ai eu pour projet ça là, Dr. Lorraine Nicholas, dit que le projet de compétition touristique là, qui a présenté un épouvement pour tes business, qui a renforcé le développement économique pour ces business là. Initiative là, qui a aussi levé belté place business à Castri pour les étrangers et les pratiques en pays à même. En hauteur de 15 millions de dollars américains, j'ai trouvé déchargé pour projeter ça là en cette leçon. Et c'est comme ça nous entrons en bout de nouvelle là, monsieur, madame, maka, nous remercions autant pour qu'à regarder, pour qu'à avoir une invitation pour que je devais encore aussi dire, conserver la vie, nous allons présenter l'autre nouvelle à Créole. Après ça, nous allons présenter l'échec. Merci on Pearl Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Generally cloudy skies with scattered moderate to heavy showers and isolated thunderstorms. Instability associated with the passage of a tropical wave will continue to produce scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms over the eastern Caribbean islands during the next 24 hours. Two other tropical waves located over the central and eastern tropical Atlantic are moving westward near 17 miles per hour to 28 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. The tide for Castries Harbor was low at 12.53 p.m. and will be high again at 7.27 p.m. 
The tide for VA4 Bay was low at 2.20 p.m. and will be high again at 8.34 p.m. The sea is moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Tuesday at 5.49 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.